get them involved at least two days of the week. I like they need to really be involved every day, but I also know the reality of what we're doing too with data. Uh, I also tried to interweave it in the book selection that I would make though in guided reading. In first and second grade, it's so much easier with the reading A to Z books that you can find. Uh, so then that way they're part of the project conversation. And project doesn't just have to happen at that time of day. And you can be doing, I don't know what type of literacy workstations are happening in, in <coughs> one and two primarily, but you can make it, you can have it come out during other times of day, especially during them. Um, four, four, five, and three, four, five, and six. Um, really just kind of depends and you, you want to look at your schedule, but everybody should be, everybody should be a part of it. And I'd gladly sit down, I'd sit down with you because I don't want to make any decisions for them without <laughs> Right, you. right. But yeah. I would say at least twice a week, but I do it during my science time. We're a, we're a STEM school, and so we have to do science. Right. Um, even if we didn't want to, we have to. Right. So it naturally works in there. And I know that before there was an explanation that being a performing arts school, that perhaps in grades five and six, the projects might be arts infused, or is that still kind the of representations a... representations could be arts infused, for oh. sure. And a lot of times you can make arts come in through. I know, um, was it hair? Did someone do a project on hair? Yes, it was Christina mm -hmm. I mean, it, and that may not sound, but that is an artistic view. It started thing. off as it, art, artists, and mm -hmm. it, it morphed into the kids decided that they wanted, they believed that beauticians were artists, and then they wanted to talk about hair, and then it, so it was, yeah, it's great. Yeah. We've had people do it on musicians, mm -hmm. um, theater stuff, but your representations can be a really, I mean, if you're doing something that's more science-based, your representations can be where you pull in the performing arts. You know, whether your kids write a rap about it or they do a theatrical presentation or, you know, they do a dance. Like, you know, if you're doing something on the life cycle of a butterfly, you can do a whole dance on, you know, sh just using movement to express how that happens. You know, kids have written songs. So there's a lot of ways to, to pull in the performing arts in the representation stage. And there's also a section in here that kind of talks about um, different types of representation. A, a lot of it's mathematical representation, which, um, again, I think is great, but you know that, that goes more with STEM. But there's also you've got these these specialists. You know, we I don't have a dance and drama teacher. I don't have an art teacher. Um, I don't. I do have. Do you don't have an art teacher? No. Mm -hmm. and it hurts my heart. Um, but but I do have people who can come in and they can help them represent through their, their expertise might be the animal life or it might be experimentation. I know Katie can come in and has done a great job with showing just kids how to work with different materials they would do representations with. Um, like I think this is Gore's class, how they were doing the clay representations mm -hmm. and that's not doing it justice. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, I was just going to say that I think it's important to have when you're gathering your documentation in phase one to have it Visible, so the kids can be reminded of what they are, what they've already thought about, and they can build on that thought. So if you could build like a wall, or you know, a space. And a lot of times, uh, can, there are things. Like, and there's no real. And I'm four minutes over your time, so I'm aware of that. So you know, you need to go. Um, a lot of times, way back when Sylvia Chart came out, she would say, in Phase One, you're having this, this, and this. And so put this here. Put phase one and put your student web here and put this here. Well, your student web doesn't really belong outside of your hallway. You take a picture of it. But your student web should be inside your room because it's a living and breathing thing that as you're learning more things, you're adding more information to it. You also don't have to necessarily say, this is, how, this is phase one. You want it to read like a book. So like this is how we started our project. And you're going to read from left to right. So you want it to make sense, but you don't have to just chunk it in phase one. Phase two, phase three. But make it read like, like the story that it is. So yeah, so I, you know, I think it's really important to have all your, you know, um, your parts in your room. So a lot of times you see them out, you know, outside. They really don't belong. They're, you know, reminders of what the kids have already kind of figured out, so they can build. So if you're doing phase one, keep that inside your room. Maybe once you have transitioned into phase two, could you then do some type of display out in the hall with phase one things and then continue with, okay. And take, I would take a picture of your Take a picture. And take that out. Or at some point, I mean, I, 
now we have Promethean boards. I might have started my student web like this, but then I would add it, put it on the Promethean board, and mm -hmm. print out a little picture of that, put that there, and then as you're learning more words in phase two, what I had one teacher do was add phase two words in a different color. Um, and then I had a teacher, she was a little lady, no, I really love <laughs> uh, She would do everything we learned in books would be in red, and everything we learned from guest speaker was in green, and everything, it doesn't have to be that deep, but you can make it that deep if you want to. Okay. I think the point is they have it out there so the kids can see that you're building what they are. Any more? I'm pass out those things from the project approach book that you can look at. And I actually think I'm really sure that somebody got this video. Mm -hmm. Same on both sides. I didn't 